Howdy there, folks, how are y'all doing? My name is Reese, and welcome back to Reese Builds a Hotel, the series, the only series that takes you through the painstaking process of Reese very slowly building a hotel and trying to figure out what the heck he's going to do here. I had an idea. What if we did that? Oh, that didn't work out at all right there. I, I'm also not sure how we're going to do that, if, if we even can do that. Oh, on the inside, I guess we ought to fill these in. Probably ought to do that. Uh, we can do that here, maybe? Uh, I mean, you can't see it from the ground, but you know it's there and it's looking like that, and I don't like it. Maybe we need to decide that one of these is the, like, the alpha, <laughs> and the other one is the... I mean, I hesitate to say beta, but I mean, that's that's what was coming to mind. And, uh, you know, according to Ye Elden Alphabet, that is that is the way it goes. Maybe the one going across, because it's a little bit taller, is going to be the supreme one. And the ones going... So, so the, the ones that go long... The, the one that's taller is the long ways one. And it's the prime roof. It's the supreme roof. And then these are the lesser roof pieces to the other side. Let's see how that looks... Once we've done it, we'll, we'll go in here and we'll fill in all these. It might be easier to do from the inside. I don't know. I haven't haven't tried. We'll, we'll fill in this side and see how that looks. I mean, certainly from the ground, you won't be able to tell. But how does it look from the sky? If someone approaches <laughs> via helicopter, I guess that works. Yeah, I guess that looks okay. I'm okay with that. And from the inside, how does that look? I was thinking on the inside, we might cover up the wood anyway and have a different roofing material. Or roofing material, if you're so inclined and like to be wrong about things, that's that's fine too. It always bothered me in the Santa Claus movie that Tim Allen, after spotting a Santa Claus on the roof of his house, goes, What are you doing on the roof? Like he's a dog barking at something. But people do that. People say roof. My grandma says roof. My grandparents actually have a long series of things that they say incorrectly. And I'm talking about all of my grandmothers in particular. I'm getting to a point where that's all I have left. I have my, I have three sets, or I had three sets. My dad's parents, and then my mom's mom and stepdad, and then my mom's dad and stepmom, right? So those are the three sets of grandparents. They, they, are, they are starting to go at an alarming pace, and I said that so callously. No, it is sad. It is sad, but I don't know if I feel human emotion like a normal person. This is this is getting weird. I guess I should just tell the story I'm thinking of in particular. Okay, so the other day... <sighs> should we not even go into it? It might be too dark a subject. Maybe, let's just not, you know? And also, what am I supposed to do there? How am I supposed to finish off the rest of that gap? What am I supposed to fill into that space? I've got no idea. Okay, you know what? Let's let's figure this out. Let's go through this one step at a time. I was going to talk about how I love my grandparents, right? And I, when my my papa and my grandpa died, it was very sad. But I don't know if I've really mentally checked into the fact that they're gone, if that makes any sense at all. And the reason I say this is, I don't... I mean, obviously, I don't spend a lot of time thinking... I don't think about the fact that they have passed away. And the other day, my father mentioned something to me about when he was a kid. Is this black stained glass? It doesn't look very stained, does it? It is, though. He said, when I, when I was a kid, my dad used to. And the way he said it made me cue to the fact that, oh, that's right, Papa passed away. And it's not like I had forgotten. It's not like it was something I didn't know. It's just I hadn't thought about it. And I got real sad because that was... Probably the first time in a while that I thought about the fact that that Papa's passed away, and that made me think like Grandpa also passed away. I'm like, are these things that I should just not? I mean, it's not like I shouldn't feel them, or it's more so are these things that shouldn't come as a like oh yeah moment to me? Is that normal for someone to do that? I don't know. Comment down below and let me know if that's uh, a problem with me. If you are someone who would, you're, you're not. You're not. I don't, you're, I don't know why I'm asking you folks. Why would you folks know? All right. I guess we're filling this in with bricks. And I guess this is the design aesthetic we have gone with. And we're going to take a step back and look at that. I'm going to move away from that. I'm going to move away from my weird uh, emotional hangups. I, I don't want to bring up any bad memories for anyone watching either. I want these to be lighthearted and fun. And oh, dear heavens, no. No, just I don't think that's what we want to do at all. That right there, that looks not good. Um, 
You know what? I think I've gotten a better idea, though. I think I've gotten a much better idea. Instead of having these go all the way to the top and accentuate the fact that I done goofed when I decided to make an asymmetrical hotel, let's have the logs go crosswise, and I'll tell you about some of the funny things my grandparents say. So, my grandparents, born and raised in Texas, right? So you'd think they'd have some Texisms. Tex Texasisms. But the thing you have to understand about Texas is we're a great big state. You know, they say everything's bigger in Texas, and that's especially true of the state itself. So my grandmother was born and raised in northeast Texas, and that's, that's my grandma. And my mamma, so my dad's mom, was born and raised in southeast Texas. And you might say well, southeast, northeast, they're both on the east. How far apart can they be? Uh, go look at a map of Texas. Uh, they can be quite far apart. And so they each say some different things that are just inaccurate. But they each say different things that are inaccurate, if that makes sense. So, for instance, if you want to talk to my memo about something going on in the top of her house, you uh, you don't say roof, you you say roof. You you ask her about uh, oh what what's going on? I saw there's a hole in your roof, like Tim Allen in the movie The Santa Claus. We've discussed that. You know how irritating that is. Uh, I don't know about Grandma. She might also say roof, but I know Memo in particular says uh, roof. Something else Memo says is, you know, occasionally you have an acorn fall out of the tree and hit the, the, the roof, correct? Not my Memo. No, no. My Memo has acorns. She has acorns. Not acorns. Acorns. They fall out of the trees and hit her roof. Got to be careful of acorns. They'll get you. Uh, another fun one from my grandma this time. Have you have you folks heard of the Amish? Some of you have heard me say this before because I find it to be quite amusing, and I I will say this because it's it reminds me of grandma. It's a grandmaism that we've all just sort of adopted because it is just funny. Uh, my grandma has never heard of the the Amish. She has heard of the Amish though, and she'll tell you all about the Amish and their quilts. It's uh, it's delightful. <laughs> Uh, grandma, love grandma. So those are some of their isms. I'm sure there would be more if I sit, and, you know, invested time in them. But I can't imagine y'all are gonna going to tolerate that much longer. I mean, how long can I go on talking about the Amish and the Acorns? And the, oh my gosh, I've got another one. Okay, Kalachi. If you don't live in Texas, you might not know what that is. So it's based on a. Is it a Czech? It might be Czech. I think it is Kalachi. Uh, maybe I should Google it. Should I Google it in the middle of the episode? I feel like I should. Uh, we're going to just like hold. I'm just going to keep moving around while I look up Kalachi Origins. There we go. We're going to make sure. Yeah, it's Czech. Originally old Slavic word meaning circle. I had no idea. Oh, well, that's Kalash. I need Kalashi. Well, I, you know, I'm sure that that's just it, it evolved over time because uh, I typed in Kalachi and it came up with a Kalach which uh, means circle. So uh, the Kalachi is created by, like many things that are amazing in this world, created by American immigrants. This time from, from the Czech Republic, like pizza. A lot of people say pizza. Oh, pizza is Italian. Uh, no, in fact, you'll find that pizza is not Italian. It was created by American immigrants in, or not American, well, immigrants to America from Italy in New York. Uh, they had something similar to the pizza, but what we know is pizza with the marinara and then the mozzarella and the pepperoni. That's that's all American, baby. Or the hot dogs. Like, yes, technically, uh, I believe the Polish, probably maybe the German. Uh, maybe they each had something similar. They had the, the bratwurst, the sausage, you know, things like that. But the American hot dog, the chili dog, that was, you know, immigrants. Again, in New York. Lots of immigration to New York in the 20s from these, these various European countries. You know, it's an all-American thing. The hamburger has origins from Germany, but the actual beef patty between bread, that's American, baby. And the kolache derived from, from the Czech immigrants to Texas, uh, but 100% a, a Texas treat, a Texas delight, I should say. I got to figure out what to do up here. I got to figure out how to, how to finish this off. I got no idea how I'm going to finish this roof. I feel like I've worked myself into a design corner. So the kolache is, imagine a pig in a blanket, but instead of like the little hot dog weenie that pigs in blankets have, it's a sausage. And there's a bit of a cheese. 
And instead of it being wrapped in like a, because it's more of like a croissant pastry, a pig in a blanket. And it's, you have like the little sausage wiener and it's wrapped around and, and then it's baked. It's more so a puff of bread with the, the sausage inside. Sometimes there's ham, like layers of ham. Sometimes it's the sausage. Sometimes there's cheese. Sometimes there's jalapeno. It's delicious. The kolache is amazing is what I'm getting at. And if you've never had one, check them out. They're, they're incredible. Jenna hates them, but Jenna's wrong and that is one thing that i don't mind you telling her because i've told her before the kolache is amazing but the most interesting thing about the kolache is that it is not what my grandmother calls it my grandmother calls the kolache the kolanchi kolanchi so wrong again pronounces it wrong delightfully wrong but very wrong we've always made fun of the way grandma says kolanchi and it's sort of led to again one of those things where Grandma says it in this particular way, and we sort of teasingly also call it that. But we learned several years ago that my darling brother, whom I love, did not realize that it was a joking way that we referred to it as a kolanchi. He he thought that that was what they were actually called. So we had this fun moment where we go in to a donut shop in Texas. Most donut shops will sell kolaches. And uh, it's they sort of go hand in hand, ham and ham, even if you will. Uh, so we go in and we're placing our order, and we ask Mike what he wants, and he just very loudly declares for the world to hear, "I want a kolanchi." And of course, he was at that very precious age of maybe like ten, where you know kids start to make fun of each other like crazy. So all of his little friends laughed at him, and he was so confused. We had to explain to him later. It's like, no, nah, it's okay, bud. You can call him that. It's just it's not called that. It's uh, it's a uh, Kalachi. And he's like, but we've always called them Kalanchis. It's like, yeah, you could blame Grandma for that, but we're sorry. Uh, classic memories. Classic Kalanchi memories. I didn't start this episode with the intention of talking about that story or the weird things that my grandparents say, but there we go. That's what's happened. Uh, Kalanchis. Micah, what a moment. There's something else that happened that day. That, that day is a video in itself. I'll summarize it here in the time we've got left. Homeschool field trip, right? We're going to go see a castle. There's this guy that lives nearby who built a castle. It's mostly historically accurate, except for one thing that I would like to complain about in a moment. But we went to go tour it. And on the way there, we stopped to get some kolaches and donuts. And that's that's who we were in there with, was all of our, our friends. And um, Micah comes out of the bathroom with his zipper undone. you know. And I see that. And I'm like, ah, I should tell Micah that his zipper is undone. I'm going to very, very quietly very discreetly walk over to my young impressionable um easily scarred younger brother my baby brother whom i'm here to protect and defend and i'm going to very low key under my breath whisper to him hey bud he flies down and as i am preparing to make that move and do that for my brother my darling baby brother whom i love and adore my mother turns around and just declares loudly where Everyone in the donut shop can hear her. Micah, zip up your pants. And poor little Micah. Poor little Micah. His face flushes red with embarrassment. Uh, all the little girls, all of his little friends, Jenna included. Jenna was there. I forgot about that. They all giggle and the guys laugh. And Micah turns beet red. And he like turns around. He zips up his pants. And I'm like, Mom, Why? <laughs> Why have you done this? Why did you do this to Micah? You've scarred the poor lad. Why? And, of course, she just didn't see a problem with it. Because that's, you know, that's how moms be sometimes. But uh, now what am I going to fill these in with? What am I supposed to put in here? But yeah, we went and saw a castle. And the thing that irritated me about it, the thing that was not his super historically accurate, was uh, the guy, he built a tower, right? And the staircase, spiraling staircase... For those of you who don't know, medieval castles, and, and I guess all castles, the staircases are always, let me think about this in my head, let me visualize it. They always spiral down in such a way that if you're invading the castle, you're coming up. The inside wall is on your right side, where your right arm is. Whereas if you're up in the tower defending invaders who are coming up from below, 
the the inner part of the spiral is on your left side, meaning you can kind of hug that left wall and your right arm is free to swing a sword and it puts the attacker on the defensive. They're not able to really get their arm up there and fight because they're kind of like up against that spot. Well, his, his were the other way around. And I was like, I guess if you're left-handed, this helps you defend, but it also, like, all the right-handed invaders are going to have an equal equal opportunity, are, are going to be just as uh, just as able to, well, there's the end of our timer, but look, I, <laughs> this guy goes through all this effort to build this castle in his yard, and he's very kind enough to let people come and tour it, and I'm just like, hey, you built your, you built, your, I didn't tell it to him, I told it to my friend Kaylee at the time, who thought I was a massive nerd, uh, and, and called me out on it, but she's a mom now, that's weird to think about, that's real weird. Is that what I'm going to put in there, or am I going to put these in there? I kind of like the idea of putting these in there. But if I'm going to put these in there, it sort of makes me wish that I had actually put the bricks behind. You know, because I think that would look better color-wise. But I think it would have looked worse on the inside to have the bricks behind. You know what I mean? Let's go take one more look inside. And uh, let's see how we feel about that, because that might be what we... Maybe we can mock up this side with the bricks, and we'll compare the two. Uh, maybe we can just do that real quick, just before the end of the episode. But, uh, yeah, all of my friends are becoming parents, and, and Kaylee is a mother of... Jeez, oh, about to be a mother of two. That's, that's weird. Uh, this is the side I meant to mock up. I haven't, I haven't completely come to terms with that. I went through a weird period before where all of my friends were starting to get married. And I was like, that's funny. And now they're all starting to have kids. And I'm like, hey, what? No. No, we're kids. Children cannot raise children. What are you doing? Uh, and they're just, they're pushing through. They're just, they're doing it. They're having kids. They're living their lives. I'm concerned for them. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't even know. How do I keep getting that turned around there? So what we're talking about here is either doing that or doing what was that? Shall see that? I keep seeing things like figures moving quickly across the screen, or shadows moving quickly across the shadows. The hedgehog moving quickly across the screen. Okay, so we got that, or we got that. Let's complete it. Let's complete it, and we'll have a good look at it. <sighs> wow, I can't believe I did an entire episode talking about kolaches and my the weird things my grandparents said. Let's change the subject for next time. I dig that more. I like that a bit more. Yeah, we'll replace that. We'll do it next episode. Hey, until next time, thank you folks for watching. God bless you, and I'll see you later. Bye!